Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we're making Xinjiang style Kao Baozi. These lovely oven baked buns are the most popular street food in Xinjiang. Different than other style buns in China, the skin is thin and crispy. There's a lot of lamb meat in it, nice and juicy. You're gonna love it. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's begin by making the aromatic water because it's going to take some time. One piece of scallion, diced, one tablespoon of diced ginger, one tablespoon of Sichuan peppercorns, one piece of star anise. Break it apart, pour in half cup of water, give it a stir and let this sit for one hour while we are preparing other ingredients. This is half of a lamb leg. You want to get a piece that has a general amount of fat attached to it. That is the secret to achieve that authentic taste of Xinjiang. I will talk about it later. Let's debone it first. Or you can ask your butcher to do it. It's pretty easy. Just put your hands here to feel and locate the female bone. Then make a nice long cut to expose it. Start peeling the meat off the bone. Keep doing that until you can grab it, then work around the joint and cut it off. We can save the bone to make stock for another recipe. The meat part is about 3 pounds. That is too much, we only need 1.5 pounds. So just divide it in half. Save one half for another day. Oh, I forgot to show you that although we didn't use that half of the meat, I did take 2 ounces of fat from it. It is important. We will use it to caramelize some onions later. Dice it. Set it aside. For the meat part, we'll keep the fat so the filling will be juicier. We're also going to dice it. Normally, dumplings, buns in China are made with ground meat. So I consider this is one of the major differences between Xinjiang style buns and the regular styles in China. Trust me, by using diced lamb, it is going to give you such a satisfying feeling when you take a bite. This does take some work, so if you ask me if you can use ground lamb, the answer is yes. It affects the texture, but it won't change the taste that much. Don't worry. Once everything is diced, use a cleaver, roughly chop it for less than a minute, this will help to bind all the meat together so the filling won't be loose. That's it. Set the meat aside. Now we should go prepare the onions. These are sweet onions. They are quite small, so I used two. If your onion is big, you probably just need one. Finally dice them. Set it aside. Get your wok ready. Drizzle in a little bit of oil, just one and a half teaspoon. We're going to use it to render the lamb fat. Stir it on low heat for a minute or two. When you see there is some oil appearing, throw in some spices, star anise, dried galango, two bay leaves, and one stick of cinnamon. The purpose here is to season the oil. We want the flavor of the spices. Keep adding half of the diced onions. We'll save the other half to add it to the filling later. Stir this on low heat. We want to caramelize it to develop some nice flavor. This is gonna take 10 minutes or so. When the onion becomes golden brown like that, turn off the heat, put everything in the bowl. This is the secret. The spices and the onions are fried in the lamb fat. I wish you could smell this. <laughs> so good. Take out the spices and set it aside. By now, the aromatic water should be ready. You just drain it. We only need the liquid. The reason we discard the spices is that we want a light and fresh aroma so you will be able to enjoy the meat itself. If it's too strong, it could overpower the natural lamb flavor. Okay, set this aside. Let's make the filling. The diced lamb meat, one and a half pound. 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 2 tablespoons of cumin powder. I like to mix in some toasted cumin seeds as well. It will give you a nice little kick when you eat the buns. 
Yes, that is a lot of cumin, but that is also the beauty of cumin and lamb combination. Unlike other spices, no matter how many cumin you use, it never takes over the lamb flavor. Instead, it brightens up the meat. Keep adding two and a half teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of soy sauce. Mix this first until everything is well combined. Then pour in the aromatic water in batches. Stir the filling within one direction until the meat absorbs the liquid. At the second batch, stir it again. Keep doing this until all the liquid is gone. Just check the bottom of the bowl, and if you see no more liquid, then you can add the rest of the ingredient. Some black pepper to taste. We could have added earlier with the cumin. I almost forgot. Not too late to add it now. Follow up with the fresh sweet onion and the lamb fat fried onion. Just a little note here: these onions are very sweet and juicy. If you switch to red onion, you probably need to add a teaspoon of sugar and a couple more tablespoons of that aromatic water to achieve a similar taste and texture. Set the filling in the fridge and let's make the wrapper. In the KitchenAid mixing bowl, add 450 grams of high gluten flour. Here are a few brands and types that I recommend. Do not use all-purpose flour because the wrapper needs to be stretchy enough to hold the filling, or else it will break easily while baking. Keep adding one teaspoon of salt, cracking one egg, pour in 160 grams of room temperature water, get a spatula and give this a pre-mix before we run the machine. There are ten speed levels on this model. Use speed level four or five. Let it run for eight to ten minutes, or until all the flour has formed into a dough. What you are looking for is something that is medium soft and non-stick, like that. Add two tablespoons of room temperature butter. Increase the speed level to six or seven, and keep beating this until the butter is well mixed. It will take a while, probably another twelve minutes. Xinjiang people will use lamb fat here. I can't get enough fat from the lamb leg that I bought, so I went with the butter. If you have access and time, ask your butcher for some trim. Render the fat yourself. I think it will make a difference. Take it out, knead it on the working surface, make it into a beautiful round, smooth dough. Wrap it with plastic film and let it sit for thirty minutes. This is thirty minutes later. Unwrap the plastic film. Sprinkle some flour on the cutting board. Also, coat the dough surface with more flour to prevent stickiness. The amount that I gave is enough to make sixteen buns. So let's divide it into sixteen even pieces. You can use a scale if you want. That way, your buns will come out with the same size. I just go with my eyes. Take one piece of the dough, stretch it, and tuck it under until there is a smooth top surface appearing. Roll this in your hand and make it nice and round. Keep doing that until you finish the rest of the pieces. Make sure you cover it with the plastic film so they don't get dry. Now we'll roll each of them into wrappers. Cover the little ball with lots of flour. Flatten it with your hand. Get a rolling pin. Your right hand pushes the pin back and forth. The left hand holds and turns the sheet as you're rolling it, just like how you will make dumpling wrappers. Except this one is much bigger in size. The diameter is about six inches long. If you point it to the light, you should see that it has a thicker middle and thinner edge. Put it away. Keep doing the next one. This is the part where it requires some patience and practice. You want to roll it nice and even, or else there is a higher chance that the wrapper will break because the buns will inflate in the oven. Make sure you apply enough flour in between the wrappers. You don't want them to stick to each other after all that work. Next is the folding. 
Just place your wrapper on the table, wet your hands with some salted water, apply lightly on one side of the sheet. This will help to seal the buns completely. Grab some filling, about two and a half ounces. Yes, that is a lot of meat, which is why you're gonna love this recipe. The folding is simple: one flip, two flips. Gently push out as much air as possible. Wet both sides with a little more water. Fold them to the middle. Make sure it's sealed well. There you go. Dust more flour on the bottom of the buns so it doesn't stick to the pan. Crack one egg. Whisk it until you cannot pick up any obvious egg white. We're gonna brush this onto the buns. It will create a shiny golden color and give you that desired look after baking. Last, sprinkle some sesame seeds and you're ready to bake them. In order to create that crusty bottom, you will need a pizza stone. I was experimenting with some oven baked dumplings and I burned the dumplings. <laughs> that is why it has those black marks. Well, it doesn't matter. It's normal for a piece of stone to discolor over time. By the way, if you don't have a piece of stone, you can use a big cast iron skillet. It will also help you to achieve that crusty skin. Let's push this back and preheat it to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Gently take one, wet your hand with some salted water, apply the water on the bottom of the bun, and quickly put it in the oven. You want to do this step as fast as possible. The oven is open, you are losing the heat as you are putting the buns in. Also, be careful, the piece of stone is hot, don't burn your finger. 16 buns should be enough to serve 4 to 5 people. I'm only serving 2 people today, so I baked 9 of them. You can save the rest in the freezer. 450 degrees Fahrenheit, bake it for 12 to 15 minutes, or until the buns turn into a golden brown color. And trust me, 12 to 15 minutes is enough to cook the lamb through. Pull it out, look at that. Beautiful. Let's test it with a fork. It sounds really crispy. Let's check the bottom as well. It is also crusty. Serve them in a basket. Let's take a look at the inside. Open it up. This is the most tempting moment. The wrapper is so thin, there is so much meat in it, and look how juicy that is. Can't wait to take a bite. I'm telling you, this smells and tastes amazing. The aromatic water and the fried onion really create a mystery flavor that whoever tries the buns will be amazed by the taste, and they can't tell what's in it. <laughs> I ate five of them as soon as they are out of the oven. It's just mind-blowing. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment and let me know how it goes. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!